the Bridge GM Green Industry Skills Fair, part of the Meet Your Future campaign. My name is Michaela Andrew and I'm the Senior Enterprise Coordinator at Greater Manchester Combined Authority and I'm joined by my colleague Tom Kay, who you won't see but is, on, is in the background doing all of the technical side of things. We're also joined by Kate Wright, who is the Group Head of Sustainability at Cephology. So today's event gives you the chance to hear from Kate and earlier today we've heard from a wide range of different people who work in sustainability in a range of sectors and why it's important that those sectors are green. There are lots of different types of projects across Greater Manchester focusing on helping us use clean energy and sus sustainable materials in the future. Our speakers, including Kate, will also explain what jobs are in demand, the career pathways and top tips for entering the world of work, especially in relation to sustainability and the green industry. For those of you that are not aware, Greater Manchester aims to be completely carbon neutral by 2038. And for those of you that joined us this morning and heard from Andy, Met Andy Burnham, the Mayor of Greater Manchester, You'll have heard his ambition um, around Greater Manchester being one of the first city regions to become carbon neutral in the UK. So our Green Industry Skills Fair is part of the wider Meet Your Future campaign. You might have been involved in this in the past and um, prior to lockdown and this academic year virtually via our live event. The Meet Your Future campaign was launched by the Mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham, in April 20, 2019 and it offers the chance for young people like yourself to experience the workplace and experiences with employers um, across Greater Manchester in a variety of different business environments to help you learn about different roles and careers and to gain first-hand experience of the world of work. So I'm delighted that we're joined by Kate Wright, who, as I said earlier, is the Group Head of Sustainability at Topology. And today's um, session will focus on sustainable consum consum consumption, can't get my words out, and we'll be focusing on how we can eat and buy more sustainab sustainably. As part of the session, you'll have the opportunity to complete a task related to um, what you've learned, and then there'll be time at the end to ask questions but as we're going throughout the session please feel free to add questions in the chat um, and then we can cover them at the end so without further ado I'll finish my, my, my talking my part and I'll pass over to Kate Wright who will talk to you a little bit more about her job role her company and her industry thank you thanks Michaela. hi everybody um, as you said, my name is Kate Wright. Um, I work for DFS Group, who you're probably quite familiar with DFS Brands. They are the UK's largest upholstery retailer. Um, and they are a combined of a few brands. There's DFS, obviously, Sophology, and Dwell. Um, and I actually head up sustainability for all three brands. Um, now, I have worked in the retail industry for about just over 20 years, but I'm actually relatively new to sustainability. Um, I actually started off as a creative, a graphic designer, an art director and a creative director. Um, I'm working in uh, lots of different areas. So first of all, graphic design, I'm doing catalogs and brochures before we begin to the internet. Um, and I actually went back to university quite late in life uh, when I was about 42 to uh, do a business degree with a view to move into sustainability, which seems like a bit of a strange stretch, but I'll explain to you why um, as we go through this presentation. Um, it's a really exciting area with lots and lots of career opportunities. So um, I'll give you a bit of a hint about that and also what it looks like in the retail sector. Um, so just to give you a little bit of context, you might recognize this image. This is Helena von Carter, who is the new face of the psychology brand. Um, not uh, not many of you probably would have purchased a sofa at this point in life um, and it's probably not an area that most people associate with sustainability. 
it isn't one that uh, features particularly high on uh, customers' purchasing criteria. They just don't tend to think about sustainability, in part because the product is used for such a long time. When you buy it, so you're going to be sitting on it for at least seven years, usually. And it's a really high price point um, purchase. So it's a little bit of a challenge to get customers to think about sustainability when shopping around for different sofas. But there are lots of different elements that, that contribute to an environmental footprint to this kind of product. For example, we use lots of timber in our frames. We use uh, different types of textiles or leather. Everything usually has metal, wooden feet, and then we use lots of foam and fibre. Each one of these components contributes to an environmental footprint of our product. And that's what my current job entails, is trying to work out what is the right way to minimise that environmental footprint? Now, my role is really exciting because it means I get to touch on every single part of the business, which is why a business degree is so important. I have to work with, obviously, the product designers, the manufacturers, working out how they design their products and manufacture them. I work with the commercial teams in terms of pricing and buying. I work with the marketing team, so back into my old career. Uh, making sure we're communicating the environmental footprint really clearly um, and then also even down to supply chain and logistics and then I also have to then look at what happens to the product once in the customer's hands and how they use it uh, and then what they do with it at the end of the life cycle to ensure that we're minimizing the environmental footprint so there's lots and lots of different areas and if you think about um, all those different areas in terms of career streams you can imagine sustainability feeding into every single one of them um, so, I just want to give you some context. DFS Group have actually gone out with a very big promise that we will be carbon neutral or net zero by 2040. I'm really impressed to hear that Manchester's aiming for 2038 because I now understand what's involved in making this kind of commitment. It's a really big deal. Um, I should mention that we actually don't have a solution to all the different challenges we're facing to get to net zero. Some of the technology just doesn't exist today. So I'm really relieved that we have 19 years to help figure this out. <laughs> um, but it's a really big process. We need to look at the complete footprint of our product. Um, and I'm sure you're all really familiar with what net zero means or carbon neutrality, but I'll just explain it again. It's about trying to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, which are leading to global warming um, in order to stop climate change. Um, so it is a really big commitment for a brand to make. Um, several other brands have already on the journey that have made this commitment. And the Prime Minister has committed the UK to become carbon neutral by 2050. So we're trying to beat his target by about 10 years. Um, as I mentioned, the upholstery industry that I work in today has lots of different aspects to it. But I just want to um, click ahead and play a video, Thomas, if you don't mind, just to give you some context about what the environment put into these materials. Okay, is this the video then? Yes, please. Sure. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get the sound working for this video, but there's subtitles, so if we could all follow um, those, that'd be great, and we can share the uh, the video with you after. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. 
You able to share your content again, please, Kate? Get the presentation. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Right. Great. Thanks. So um, that little video, I apologize, I apologize, didn't quite come through. What we're trying to illustrate is the environmental impact of a single area of our supply chain. Um, now, leather is obviously a waste product from the meat industry, but it's still linked to a particularly harmful industry. Um, the impact of it on the um, Amazon rainforest can be quite devastating, as I'm sure you've all heard. So quite a big part of what I'm trying to do at the moment is around uh, ensuring that we're sourcing our raw materials sustainably. Um, we've created a uh, framework to help us track our progress and through the customer uh, through the product life cycle we call it the sofa cycle and a lot of what i'm doing is working with the manufacturers and the supply chains looking at each and every single source of our raw materials so where do we uh, source our trees from we work very closely with fsc to ensure that all the wood that's used is sustainable um, I frequently speak to experts around uh, what is the right time of year to be logging in certain regions to make sure that we're not causing additional um, harm to forests. Um, we work with experts in the leather industry to make sure that the uh, family process is as sustainable as possible. Um, and we work with lots of government officials around how they're managing uh, legislation on uh, raw materials coming into various industries. Then I work very closely with all the manufacturers on the um, methodology, um, the logistics and supply chain, as I discussed, and then also, of course, uh, customer perception. And try to make sure that customers understand what they're buying. And that's what I mean by last longer. How do we encourage the customers to uh, use their product for as long as possible before they get rid of it? And then encouraging them to um, reuse and recycle their products, so passing it on to friends and family or ensuring this recycled rather than ending up on landfill. I think the sofa cycle framework is quite an interesting one because if you think about the different careers attached to every single area there, they all need to have a view of what's happening uh, from a sustainability point of view. I would actually do this is a little bit unusual in that we have managed to structure sustainability as part of every single person's role. So regardless of what career path you're in, uh, sustainability is linked to it in some way or another. In fact, so much so that most people because of business actually have uh, bonus structures around ensuring that they're operating in a very sustainable way. Uh, it just goes to show that businesses are taking this really seriously and embedding it in everybody's role. It's not just a career in its own mind, although it's obviously where I've ended up. Uh, it is linked back through to every single marketing person has to look at it, everyone in the finance team has to consider it, or very, very closely with the finance team. Uh, if you're interested in that kind of accounting career, there's actually um, quite a lot of interest from uh, shareholders and uh, um, from finance reporting institutions on our ear agenda so we've got to be really clear about how we're communicating what we're doing and what the commercial impact will be as well as the environmental results so there's lots and lots of different areas that you could uh, take a sustainable uh, career path so i just want to then talk to you a little bit more around um carbon emissions because obviously that net zero number uh, or to target of 2040 um, is influenced by a number of different factors. So I'm sure you've all seen this before, carbon emissions by a sector, obviously the majority of it is made up by energy. But if you think about um, the energy sector, it's actually huge. It's not just the gas that's in the cars, it's also the it's used in transport, used for buildings, used in manufacturing and production. Um, but then if you look at the other remaining uh, 27%, uh, it also includes agriculture and forestry, which obviously in um, a social business we also touch on. 
Um, there's industry, which of course we're involved in manufacturing, and there's obviously waste, which is the end of the product life cycle as much as it is the waste um, during the manufacturing process. So there's lots and lots of different areas that we need to consider when trying to work out what the carbon footprint is of our product. But that's partly what I'm trying to do. It's called an LCA, a life cycle analysis, where you actually try and trace the individual components that go into making up a sofa, how it's manufactured, and um, what the environmental impact is of each of those. Now, that sounds really sciencey, and I'm not a science person. I need to stress that. You can work in sustainability and not have a science background. Um, but you have to uh, have a basic understanding of your product in, in quite a lot of detail, I think. Um, you need to be able to understand what kind of contributing factors uh, for each and every single material. And then what you need to do is think about how you potentially make some changes on those to reduce those. It does have a, an element of creativity in this. We're actually doing quite a lot of product development and design and research to try and figure out solutions to these problems. Uh, I think I would say majority of industries don't have solutions to all the different aspects of their product environment footprint. Um, so there is quite a lot of uh, innovation going on out there. Um, and I would say product engineering is uh, possibly a huge growth area. I recommend considering. So what I want to do with you today as a task is have a think about our carbon footprint. So I've picked some products that I think you might all be familiar with as consumers. And I've put their, uh, um, their declared uh, carbon footprint. So your average pair of Nike trainers has a seven and a half uh, kilogram carbon footprint. I think Nike are incredibly innovative in this space. They have probably one of the most sophisticated sustainability programs that's available on the market at the moment. Um, they use a 50% recycle of manufacturing waste in the production of their shoes. Um, they actually have some really good recycling schemes going through. Um, the iPhone has quite a hefty environmental footprint and I will just stress that that um, carbon emissions number doesn't include usage. So obviously every time you charge your phone, you're contributing to carbon emissions and it doesn't include what happens to the product at the end of the life cycle. So um, it's just more to the point that it's in your hands in terms of manufacturing and materials used. Um, but it actually it's not as high as a carbon footprint as you might think, in part because again, Apple is very sophisticated about where they source materials and what materials they use. And then last but not least is the good old Big Mac. Um, which has a remarkably hefty carbon footprint, considering it is a consumable and one that, you know, if you're really hungry, could be gone in just a few minutes. And the reason for that is because it uses beef, um, which is actually then linked back to why I highlighted leather as a particularly uh, heavy contributor to sofas. Um, the meat industry, as shown in that video, has a massive environmental footprint. Uh, it starts with how the land is used to raise the cattle, um, the impact of deforestation on provide the land for cattle. Um, but cattle themselves produce methane, which is a significant contributor to um, carbon emissions. Um, and the industry as a whole uh, is actually still growing, which is partly why it's really important that we take a really good look at how we are consuming um, meat but also just items in general so that's what i'd like you to do today is have a think about uh your carbon footprint so one of the leaders in the space by the name of mike berners lee uh he's the brother of tim berners lee the founder of the internet he um has proposed that we should try and live a five ton carbon lifestyle so that means every year each individual would have um a five a ton carbon allowance that they would try and use effectively across a 12 month period. What I would like you to do is have a look at what your carbon footprint is of what you would eat in a year, because then that would give you an indication of uh, your carbon footprint uh, as, a, as a starting point. I'll just give you a little hint. If you wanted to fly from London to Hong Kong, that is 4,500 kilograms of carbon 
And that's just one way. So you wouldn't be able to get home and live a five ton car lifestyle. It'd be really, really challenging. What I suggest you do is go either onto the URL that's uh, at the bottom of the screen, or if you've got a phone with a camera on it, just hold it up against that QR code and it will take you to uh, the BBC website where there is a calculator. So you can put in the foods that you eat, uh, how regularly you eat them, and it it will uh, give you an estimate of your carbon footprint for your favourite foods. Okay. So I think we've given you about 10 to 15 minutes to that task. I think we go ahead and play.
Hi everyone, um, we'll return from the task if that's okay and uh, we'll pass back over to Kate um, just to finish off the presentation, thank you. You're just on mute, Kate. Sorry, I can't get it off. It's okay, I can hear you now. You're on mute again, Kate. It seems to be stuck. Yeah, we can hear you again. Ah, okay. okay. <laughs> um, so everyone, I hope you really enjoyed the exercise. I think it's quite interesting to have a look at what we consume on a daily basis. Um, and bear in mind that uh, everything else that you consume, whether it be the clothes that you wear or the um, anything that you buy, has a carbon footprint. And it, Every business in the world should be trying to figure out what is the right way to reduce their carbon footprint. Some are much further along than, it, than others. And I would really encourage you to think about it when you're uh, purchasing anything at all. If you could look for products that have a low carbon footprint or an environmental stance. Because at the end of the day, we do live in a capitalist society. Um, businesses will uh, deliver for what customers are asking for. You hold a lot of influence at the end of the day. Um, it isn't purely down to us. I just wondered if there are any questions that I could help answer. Yeah, thank you, Kate. We've got a couple um, of questions in the chat that we'll start with, if that's OK. Um, mm -hmm. And then yeah, please feel free um, over at the schools, colleges, if you've got any questions, pop them in the, the the question and answer section and before we finish we'll see if Kate can answer them for us if not we'll um, definitely be able to answer and follow up after the event so the first question is from Alder um, High School and their question is where do you get the ideas from um, for how to make sophology more sustainable? That's a really good question um, and the honest answer is they can come from absolutely anywhere. So for example, um, as you would all be familiar at Christmas time, we quite frequently have a lot of uh, Black Friday sales in the retail space. Uh, now Sophology doesn't do sales, it's not part of our brand ethos to discount the product and we wanted to use the opportunity to champion a very different kind of message. So we made Black Friday, Green Friday, and for every sofa that we sold, we planted more trees. So uh, for, um, the campaign was phenomenally successful. We've then repeated it over the last couple of years. We've launched more sustainable products. Um, but that idea came from, I think it was our marketing team trying to balance around what do we do as our alternative to Black Friday. Um, I will say our manufacturers who are really involved in the innovation process come up with lots of the ideas. But sometimes it can just be random things. I could be watching a film and suddenly think, oh, what would happen if we tried to reclassify some timber uh, as an agricultural crop? What would that do to the supply chain? Um, so there's lots of different aspects. Um, it can come from absolutely anywhere. It's probably right. <laughs> Great, thank you. Hopefully that answers your question um, over at Alda. Um, just before we finish, a couple of questions from me, um, if you don't mind. Uh, hopefully it might help the students to think a little bit more closely about sustainability as a career. But um, what do you enjoy the most about it, Kate, in terms of this career? And also, 
what subjects? I know you mentioned before that you don't necessarily have to have a science background for this career, but what subjects do you think um, sustainability and a career in sustainability most links to? Um, so the thing that I love about it is the fact that I get to work with such a wide variety of different parts of the business. Uh, it's the variety that makes the job really, really interesting and challenging. Um, there aren't many career types where you do get to stretch across lots and lots of different uh, disciplines, um, lots of different characters and careers along the way, and you learn an awful lot. This is an industry where everything is changing all the time. Um, I'm particularly passionate about innovation and trying to find solutions to problems. Um, I think that's probably what I'm doing most. In terms of skill sets, um, what I think is brilliant about sustainability is you could follow your passion in any particular area, whether that be even copywriting. There's a huge challenge around how to articulate um, an ESG or sustainability agenda in the right way so people understand it. So it can be quite complicated. You could do finance and decide to do about reporting. You could do marketing. You could do product design or innovation. What I think will stand you in any uh, career, any career whatsoever, is uh, language. If you can articulate yourself very clearly, um, it is probably the greatest strength that you'll have in any career. Uh, and sustainability is complicated and it is so collaborative. You have to work with so many different people with different ideas and different agendas. So to be able to communicate with them really well and convey an idea or, or get your point across or even convince them to do something they really don't want to do. I spend a lot of time talking people into doing things they didn't think they wanted to do and make them really excited about it. So being able to uh, um, articulate a compelling idea or a compelling argument reason is really, really important and really powerful. And it doesn't really matter what career stream you go into. I would say focus on uh, your English classes and your language skills, so being able to articulate is really uh, probably the most valuable thing you could do in high school career. That's great. Thank you, Kate. It's really valuable insight and I think um, you've hit the nail on the head that skill set is just so important and communication skills are um, incredibly important. So for all those young people out there listening, you know, take that on board, think about how you can develop that skill set, that communication, and that ability to be able to talk and, and share your ideas. And um, you can definitely see your passion for this area. So thank you so much, Kate. We have come to the end of the session. So, you know, can't thank you enough for your time and the stories and the insight that you've shared. For me, the, the video was really powerful. I know we didn't have the sound, apologies for that, but we will send that out afterwards and, and you know, you can re-watch that. Um, there was lots to learn from there. Um, so thank you, Kate, um, for your time. Um, for all those schools and colleges um, listening, we have um, the rest of the afternoon, we have some um, live broadcasts um, with videos from employers um, that are showing um, until three o'clock this afternoon. So I'll share the link now in the chat. Um, and then if you've got time within your classes, you can perhaps um, log on and watch um, some of those videos and you can keep up to date with all of the Meet Your Future opportunities um, on GMAT and also on our um, social media pages. Um, you can follow GMAT and find out more about um, the Meet Your Future opportunities. So that's everything from us. Again, a huge thank you, Kate. We hope you enjoyed the session and we'll look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.